اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ٹاپک آف مائی خود بہ ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ is going to be on the topic of understanding the concept of will of Allah understanding the concept of the will of Allah I just recited chapter 3 verse 26 of Al-Quran ڈگنیٹی on whomsoever you will and disgrace whomsoever you will all good lies in your hand verily for sure You are the possessor of full power to do all you will. Very powerful statement for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our holy book, the holy writ, Khatam al-Qutb, which was revealed to our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam being the khatmun nabijin seal of the prophets the last and the best of the prophets khatmun nabijin sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam in order to understand the concept of the will of Allah the best source to understand Al-Quran is with the help of Al-Quran itself sometimes we say Tafsiru Al-Quran Bil-Quran do you want to understand Al-Quran? Al-Quran will explain itself 
is a book of wisdom. Quran al Hakim, book of wisdom, logic. Its commandments appeal to your mind, to your intellect. You do not have to believe in it unless you get your intellect, believe in it, and your heart also gives the fatwa, the verdict that this is the truth, what Allah speaks. Allah tells us, and in our Quran, and you confer, you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you confer honor and dignity on whomsoever you will. What does it mean? What does it mean? And that's the topic, to understand its meanings today, inshallah, with the help of Al-Quran. And disgrace whomsoever you will. Honor and disgrace, as we are told in Al-Quran, depends on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he wills if he wants to give honor to us honor to us it is his will if he wants to disgrace us we are told it's his will what does it mean na'uzubillah na'uzubillah does it mean that God is going to decide depending on the mood of God Nauzubillah for that day what does it if he wills it happens if he doesn't will it it will not happen does he explain his will is there his will being explained what he wills he says I do what I will does he explain what he wills in Al-Quran, he says, I will do what I wish. Does he explain what he wish? Or it's going to be just a random day selection of the mood of Nauzubillah of, the, of God that day. Not so. His will, his wish has been explained. He has explained for us what he wills. And he has, has explained for us what he wishes. It's true. Nothing happens without his will. It is also true. Nothing happens without his wish. But what is his wish? And what is his will? Is the question at hand. Did he explain to us human beings what his will is? Did he explain to us human beings what he wishes for us? Is a, is, a, is a point of some confusions by some of us. They stretch it to a degree when they say the confusions I'm talking about are stretched to a degree that some people start saying what can we do nothing happens without his will if he wills us to be good we will be good if he wills us to be bad we will be bad if he wills us to go to jungle paradise we will go to paradise if he wills he will go to hell we go to hell what can we do what can we do it's his will is his decision is his choice I hope I understand, uh, I explained the question a little clearly because that's a confusion and, and my khutbah inshallah is an exercise with his help to understand what he wills. And he has explained so many times what he will in Al-Quran. You want to know in brief what he wills? Read Al-Quran. Al-Quran explains in detail what he wills and what he wishes for us. 
Al-Quran explains in detail what he does not will and what he does not wish for us. He explains. This is the book of explanation of the will of God. Otherwise, if we are just the robots and we have no choice as human beings, if we are being programmed as computers, as robots, and the software had been written by him and we have no choice but to act according to the software, then why we are being punished or rewarded? When we have no choice to do good, it is his will, it is his choice, then why we are being rewarded? Doesn't make sense. It doesn't appeal to your human intellect. If he wants to punish us, punish us, if this is what he wills, what can we do? So the why we are put into fire, why we are put into difficulty and Jahannam? Why? Oh God, you programmed me to go to hell, now you punish me? I had no choice. And you programmed me to go to heaven and you reward me, I had no choice but you reward me because you willed. This discussion gets into the discussion of predetermination or predestination. Sometimes in, in the Urdu language we call it kismat. Sometimes we translate as fate. Fate. If it's in my fate it will happen. If it's not in my fate it will not happen. That's true. But what determines our fate is the, is the discussion. Are there any laws, any guidelines which determines or predetermine the consequences of our actions? The consequences of our actions, I said. I did not say predetermination of our action. Our actions are not predetermined. We have a choice. The consequences, the laws, which determines the consequences of our action are predetermined. And you will not see any change in that law. That's called taqdeer. That's called the laws of Allah. Taqdeer, if you look at the dictionary meanings of the word taqdeer, you will find one of the beautiful meanings is the law. Taqdeer means the laws of Allah. Predetermined law of Allah on the law of cause and consequence. There is a cause and there is a consequence. The law is determined, predetermined. That you do good, you will be rewarded good. That's predetermined. You do bad, the law says you do bad, is a predetermined law that you will have a bad consequence. That law will never change. That's called the Sunnatullah. That's called the Sunnah of Allah. That's the word used in Al Quran Sunnah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word Sunnah has been used more than once, but only for Sunnatullah not used in our Quran, we use it sometimes, Sunnah Muhammad, which is fine, but that's not the vocabulary of Al Quran. For Sunnah Muhammad, a better vocabulary, a Quranic vocabulary is, vocabulary is, the word is, Uswa. Uswa Hasana. Muhammad has the best Uswa. But the Sunnah, Sunnah is Sunnah, Sunnatullah. The practice and the laws of Allah never changed in hundred years, never changed in thousand years, never changed in ten thousand years. The laws which were applicable when Adam was created, the laws which were applicable during Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, 
same. The laws of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam never change. Allah's laws never change. The law of Muhammad sallallahu in his time never changed. And it will not change. Look at the, look at the motivation now. Motivation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is motivating us. You want to observe the laws of his creation? They will never change. Observe and re and re understand the laws of Allah. Understand the laws of Allah through a textbook. That textbook has been written and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And that textbook is the is the is his creation. Allah's creation is his open textbook. Have been quoted multiple times in Al Quran, which is the second textbook. The laws of nature, secular terminology, I call them laws of Allah. Laws of nature are laws of Allah. The sun rises from the east, sets in the west. You will not see it changing. The law will not change, so it will not start rising from the south and setting in the in the north. But if you think the sun of Islam might rise from the west, that's a possibility. And in my opinion, my belief, coming from the east, I come from the east. That's where the sun rises. I came to the west because I started thinking and reflecting and believing that the sun of Islam is going to rise from the west. Alhamdulillah. That's why I'm here in the west today. I live in the West with a hope and a desire and a wish. The son of Islam, the son of the teachings of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam will rise one more time, but it will rise from the West. That's my opinion. You can disagree with it. But it's not very easy for you to disagree. Why? Because the proof is in the pudding. Just go to the east, see what's happening. See what is happening. Muslim killing Muslims, destroying the houses of worship. Is that the teachings of Al Quran? No. You leave the teachings of Al Quran. You don't practice it or you misunderstand it, get ready for the consequence. That is called law of Allah, the consequence. That's called taqdeer of Allah. The law of Allah. That is called sunnatullah. It will never happen that you destroy the houses of worship. It will never happen you destroy mosques and synagogues and churches and temples and then God says I'm going to reward you big that's not the law of Allah Allah says I don't like it that's my law I want the houses of worship to be protected that is my will that is my wish you break his wish you break Allah's will which has been explained in the Quran get ready for the consequences the law of Allah will get invoked Allah can forgive us, can wait, can forgive us multiple times, again and again and again for our breaking His will, His wishes, His laws. I'm talking about my own personal life. Allah has been so merciful to me, so ghafoor rahim to me. I did bad and He forgave me. I did bad again and again and He forgave me. And then Allah said, read the Quran, I'm forgiving you, but listen, don't misuse this opportunity. Because don't you see young people dying anytime? You think you're going to live for a long time? 
Get ready. Repent. Repent. Quickly. Before it's too late. I'm forgiving you. I'm giving you chances after chances. Don't try to misuse my, uh, my, my rama, my mercy, because I can take you anytime. So repent, take a U-turn. So when you repent, when you take a U-turn, Allah's another law of Allah, another will of Allah, another wish of Allah gets invoked. Become operation. Here is the will of Allah. Here is the laws of Allah. You are told, move forward. And you move forward, that creates more space in the back. For more people to come. That's the law of Allah. If you don't move forward, and you start praying to God, I'm not moving forward, oh God. Create more space in the masjid. Can you please create more space in the masjid? You can keep praying. Allah says, you must pray and you must act. Verbal, verbal prayer is not enough. Verbal prayer is going to create opportunities for us to act. If we are sick, we pray to God Almighty Allah, Oh God, please give me help. And we pray to Him. And when he looks at our prayer, and he feels the prayers are coming from my, our heart, and there's a sincerity of prayer, and after we cry out loud, and we cry in our sajda, and we cry in our prayers, Oh God, give me help. Allah says, I have listened. I have listened. And I'm going to answer your prayer. But you have to get out of your of your room. Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. You said, oh God, you are my doctor. I'm not going nowhere. I'm here. He said, I, I know I'm your doctor. I have created this opportunity for you. I have created this opportunity. Just take an action now. Go to the doctor. Go to the hospital. I will just put in the mind of the doctor who is going to diagnose your problem the right way. There will be no confusion in the mind of the doctor because I have listened to your prayer. I have accepted your prayer. He is going to diagnose your problem and he is going to give you a good medicine. But you have to take few steps. Steps. Go. Go to the doctor. Go to the internet. Look for the doctor's names. Look for the hospital nearby. Just prayer is going to give you the opportunity. Prayer is an action. But action re re demands even more actions. Oh God, give me a PhD, doctorate, in, in a degree in doctorate. I'm not going nowhere. He said, can you please apply for, it, for admission? I listen to your prayer. I give you a high degree. You want to study the laws of Allah, the laws of nature, make efforts, study. In the modern terminology we say study of the laws of Allah is the studies of astronomy, physics, mathematics, how to make use of the free sun and the sand with the help of the human mind. Allah gave us human mind. Allah gave us the sun. We didn't pray for the sun. He is our Rahman. He gave us the sun without our asking. He gave us the sand without our asking. He gave us the mind without our asking, without asking. Allah says, I have been merciful benefactor and a merciful redeemer. Take advantage of it now. Go and apply for the job. Learn how to make use of the sun and the sand with the help of your mind. Nourish your mind. 
with the laws of Allah's knowledge of laws of Allah and then you will be able to create something useful for humanity and that's called solar energy and that's called wind energy and that's called geothermal energy and that's called hydro uh, 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 wind uh, uh, waves energy make use that's the law of Allah that's his will he told us what he wills let me give you Quranic verse for your understanding and for my own understanding I have to understand myself and then share my understandings with you my brothers and my sisters I have responsibility on my shoulders, my own responsibility on my shoulders. And you are not off the hook. You have your responsibilities on your shoulders. I cannot help you on the day of judgment when the final approval of our actions and of our efforts and our iman, when Allah the Malik Yawmiddin will judge us, He's not going to ask me about you. And he's not going to ask you about me. He knows you and he knows me. He knows you more than anybody can know you. And he knows me better than any Imam, any Mufti, any Sheikh, any religious scholar. More than they, how can they know me? I have been fasting in the blessed month of Ramadan. How do they know I am fasting? They think I am fasting. Only Allah knows if I am fasting or not fasting. So these are laws of Allah. He sees everything. He observes everything. He observes and looks at the hearts of people. And then he tells us in chapter 6 verse 149 of Al-Quran. Let me explain one, quickly mention one more time. Al-Quran is the explanation of the will of Allah. That's the will of Allah. Chapter 6 of Al-Quran, verse 149. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul falillahi al-hujjatul baligha. Say, Allah is telling us, giving us a command, explaining us His law now. He says, He is going to give us a conclusive argument. Hujjatul Baligha is a conclusive powerful argument is going to be given right now Allah says I'm going to tell you a conclusive argument so that there is no more discussion in your mind confusion in your mind let me help you clarify your mind regarding the will of Allah you wanted to know the will let me give you the my my, my explain you my will and I'm going to explain you so that this becomes a conclusive hujjatul balagha conclusive reasoning conclusive argument what is that reasoning had he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had he enforced his will he would have surely guided you all to Jannah that's his will the will is that I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to force you. If I would have forced you, I have guided you all to Jannah. I would have guided you all to Sirat al mustaqim And you had no choice but to be among the, among the people of the paradise. Everybody. That's his will. If I say that's that's not his will. He said, if this would have been my will, I would have guided everybody. 
He said, that's not my will. Because I do not give you enforced coercion, under coercion, no coercion by God Almighty God. He gives us the choice. That's why in Surah Al-Fatiha we pray so many times. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Why are we are praying? If it's his will to give us the sirat al-mustaqeem, he would have guided us by force. So we know now his will is not to force anybody to sirat al-mustaqeem. He, he, he will give you the, the directions he gives you the reasoning that you go right and you will go to, to uh, you will go to Jannah. sirat al mustaqim sirat al lazina an anta alayhim. You want to be mulim? You want to be in paradise? Pray to God and make efforts. I'm not going to force you. That's why we pray. Ghair al maghdub alayhim wal dwalin. Oh Allah. Please, please help me to, to, to understand better and to practice according to my right understanding of Islam, the teachings of our Quran, so that I, am, I go to, to uh, I follow the path of the Munim, the blessed ones. And please, oh God, I'm going to walk, I'm going to drive. Please make sure I don't end up in Jahannam at the wrong place that's what we pray day in and day out multiple times a day god did not enforce we worship you and then we seek your help i have been thinking oh god i want to seek your help before i worship why did you tell me to worship you first and then seek help he says, I gave you so much free. The sun, the moon, the intellect. I gave you free. Did you make use of it? You said, no. What do you want now? You said, I, I want cheap electricity. He said, no, cheap electricity is an astain. It's coming after. You have done the worship. You have, done, you have taken care of the ibadah. Ibadah does not uh, start and stop in the masjid only. That's not Ibadah. This is part of the Ibadah. Jumatul Mubarak is a beautiful, blessed day. It's a part of Ibadah. Five prayers a day, part of Ibadah. How about after one and a half, two hours, the prayer time finishes? Five prayers took two hours. How about the remaining 22 hours of the day? No ibadah. Are we off the hook now? We can do whatever we feel like doing. Allah says, I have laws for the remaining 22 hours as well. If you go to job, you go to business. So, Bismillah rahman rahim go to business after Juma prayers and try to do the business to the best of your ability and with honesty and credibility. So that I can reward you, your business exercise or your job up, uh, situation with the mercy, with the reward. And that job of yours can become worship, can become ibadah. When you go to sleep, for the sake of Allah, fi sabilillah, then your sleep is worship. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Whatever you do, either it's a worship or it's not a worship. Depend on your niyyah, why you're doing whatever you're doing. Is it for the sake of Allah? It can become worship. And do it within the boundaries. If you want to do it for the sake of Allah, then you're not going to cheat. You're not going to tell a lie. You're not going to take a bribe. Because that's going against the law of Allah against the will of Allah and if you do Allah says my will law will get invoked I can forgive you a couple of times but then don't forget I told you what I did to the people of Moses 
I forgave them. I forgave them second time, third time. And they said, Moses, you go and fight for Palestine. We are just eating some vegetables. I'm paraphrasing. So what happened? The law of Allah got invoked. And they were put into the wilderness for 40 years. Because they disobeyed the law of Allah. If, just, I'm just thinking. Look at the jihad, look at the struggles of life of, of the prophets and the messengers as explained in the Quran. Look at the examples of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. Look at the example of Moses, Isa alayhi salatu wassalam, Musa Look at the, look at the life of our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. Was he sitting at home and doing prayer and not getting out? to defend and to go to business and go to job and learn and, and teach that is called law of Allah otherwise he would have said oh God whatever you will if you want to be good I'll be good if you want to be bad I'll be bad Allah says if I would have forced my will everybody will go to paradise then he says this is the last verse because of lack of time Many verses here. Chapter 7, verse 128. Let me translate for the sake of time. And when the disbelievers commit an act of indecency, when the disbelievers commit an act of indecency, bad act, when the disbelievers do something bad, in other words, they say, the disbelievers say, we found our forefathers practicing on it. What can we do? Our forefathers were doing bad, so we are doing bad. Oh God, what that, why you want to punish me? Then he says, and, and then the two arguments, the disbelievers are giving two arguments to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not, for doing bad. Look, the arguments of the bad people. They are saying our forefathers were doing bad, so we are doing bad. The second argument. We, and it is Allah who has enjoined it upon us. We are doing bad because it is you, Allah, you forced it on us to do bad. Look at this argument. Allah is, look at the answer now. Say, say to them, to these disbelievers, Surely Allah never enjoins indecencies, never, never will force you to do something bad. He doesn't force us to do good, why, can he, why will he do, force us to do bad? Doesn't make sense, here's the answer. He says, say, O Muhammad, tell them, say, surely Allah never enjoins indecencies. Do you attribute to Allah what you do not know that it is from Him? Why do you attribute this to Allah? That it is Allah's will. It is not His will. It is your will. So don't. We are responsible as Muslims. We are responsible people as Muslims. We have to take the responsibility of doing good and get rid get rewarded that's the laws of Allah do bad bad consequence waiting you for you for us forgiving 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 and then he says come away so this is the law of Allah this is the will of Allah may Allah guide us and help us understand his will his will is Al Quran he gives us do's and don'ts in Al Quran that's his will وَآخُرُ الدَّوَانِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I'll keep it short now inshallah and I'll close with the dua of Al-Quran the dua of Al-Quran is chapter 2 verse 228 
I want you to reflect on this Quranic dua. When this dua is recommended in the Quran, there are two sentences before this dua. And Allah is telling us why we should do this dua. And I want you to understand what are those two sentences. And after that guidance of two sentences, Allah tells us to do this dua and I'll do the dua and we all do the dua together inshallah. It's a Quranic dua, a blessed dua. It says, لا يقلف الله نفس إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. Allah charges no soul but to its capacity. If the soul shall be paid for that which it has done of good, and against it who has incurred evil deliberately. That's the law of Allah. That's the will of Allah. And then he says, do this dua. And let's do the dua, please. And then we'll close the Jummah khutbah, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana la ta'akhizna in nasina o akhtana. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته الا الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به وافعنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اور رب take us not to task if we forget or if we make a mistake. Our Lord, lay not upon us the burden of disobedience as you laid upon those before us. Our Rabb, charge us not with the responsibility which we have not the strength to bear. Therefore, overlook our faults and grant us protection and have mercy on us. You are our master. Therefore, help us against the disbelieving people. Amin. Summa amin. Aqimus salat. Thank you. It is always advisable to straighten our lines. More importantly, let's remain focused in our prayer. Whatever we pray, we should pray with some focus. What does it mean we are praying? And we should pray with a lot of humility, a lot of humility to our Rabbul Alameen. Allahu Akbar A'uzu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Rahman, Rahim. 
wal asr innal insana lafi khusrin illa allazina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr allahu akbar subhana rabbi alazim subhana rabbi alazim subhana rabbi Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Arrahman Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyakan abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina siyat al-mustaqim Siyat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-magdubi alayhim Walad-dalim والتين والزيتون وطور السنين وحاز البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يقذبك بعد بالدين Allah sallahu bi ahkamil hakimin Allahu akbar Subhana rabbi al-azim Subhana rabbi al-azim Samillahu liman hamida Allahu akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذو الجلال والإكرام برحمةك الرحمن الرحيم Takbir! Allah Akbar! Takbir! Allah Akbar! Takbir! Allah Akbar! Assalamu alaikum. Certainly want to thank our brother, Imam Hibi Omar. He mentioned he came from the east, but he's also coming to us from the northeast now, coming from Delaware. And we certainly appreciate him, his lovely wife and business partners here with him. And he also brought his brother here for the first time coming from Germany, also from uh, Texas. We thank both of them for being here. 
Uh, we're also going to be planning some events with our, our brother, since he's not too far from us, uh, to come here and do some, some seminars on the weekend. Uh, there are two, two products, there are many products, but there are two products that you may be familiar with that he produces, and that is the Dictionary of the Quran, the Black Book. I don't know if you have it with you now. We do have it in the bookstore, and when we run out, we just get more from him and that Quran that he held up. Those are the products that they produce. And um, this one here, very, this is the book, and this is Tafsir Quran, Bill Quran. It's not like Hans Weir. It doesn't have anything to do with conversation. It's only dealing with Quranic, Arabic, and it deals with it translating itself. All the terms are based on what the Quran, how the Quran, what the Quran says about it. The dictionary of the Quran, very good product. And we use this, Imam Wazdi Muhammad also recommended this book, so many of us are using this book as well. Uh, so when we run out, we get, we get more, and we thank him for always uh, making sure we have plenty. A uh, very good study tool. And we know we just came out of the month of Ramadan, a month of serious study. We're not going to stop now. We have to continue our studies. We have a lot of work to do, as he said. In fact, there's a, there's a report where the prophet said one day the light will shine in the West. That's a, that's a hadith, really, a report from the prophet, peace upon him. But he mentioned, he mentioned uh, that in terms of what we're seeing. And Allah to Allah has all the Muslims from every place in the world in America now. And they are the most educated among Muslims around the world. And we travel, we see. But they're all here converging here in America right now. And so we're getting the best. We're getting some under we're seeing some things that's been there that many have missed over the years because as he mentioned they've gotten away. Now we, nothing new, it's just some things that's coming out now that we're able to see now because we're in a situation that never existed uh, when the four schools, for example, were upon us. This land never existed, the circumstances never existed. So we're seeing some things that others didn't have to really be challenged with to see here in America. So there is a light coming, and as we travel around and we speak to the different scholars outside, they're seeing the same thing as well. So you want to thank our brother and be on the lookout for us seeing him more. Uh, other brief announcements. We have a men's meeting at 7 a.m. in the morning. Men, uh, get the word out. If someone not here, pass the word out, men's meeting. We're starting back up the flea market. Uh, really, it'll be a flea market here from 8.30 to 5. Bring your, bring your goods, bring your services, and uh, use the parking lot here. We'll shut it down for the, for the flea market. Uh, that's also, we have Arabic classes tomorrow, intermediate Arabic class. Uh, that's on the conference call. Get the number out of the book, out of the brochure. Uh, some other big things. Let's see what else is going on here. And hopefully, y'all have the the bulletin. Uh, Key Bar will be closed Tuesday because of July the fourth. That's our senior nutrition site. Our senior nutrition site that'll be closed on on uh, Tuesday, July the fourth. Uh, we do have the Ramadan session CD, we, CDs. We had a weekend of Ramadan studies. Uh, Quranic studies, uh, so we have those CDs available now downstairs. Twelve CDs for sixty dollars, and if you if you attended if you attended the uh, sessions, you get another discount. I believe is what it what it says. I don't have it in here, but it says discount on the full set if you attend the Ramadan session. So you can get that downstairs. And I think those are anything else, Linda Major. Okay, those are the major ones. Get the bulletin for the for the other announcements. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum.